Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we will study an another type of chromatographic technique which is known as gas chromatography. In gas chromatography, as you all know in all chromatographic techniques, a mixture is taken. So a mixture is made up of two or more components. So obviously gas chromatography is also used to separate out different components from a mixture. So simply gas chromatography is used to separate different components from a mixture. Now this mixture can be nucleic acids or it can be different proteins. It depends on the type of mixture which you want to separate. Now in gas chromatography, the mobile phase is taken as the mobile phase is gas and the stationary phase which sticks to the column is in solid state, solid or liquid state. Mostly they use liquid state for stationary phase and in liquid state for example they use the silica grease silica grease so they use silica grease as a liquid stationary phase and in mobile phase they use gas that's why it is called as gas chromatography and the gas is most uh, is usually a uh, noble gas means a uh, inert gas which doesn't react with the sample so it is basically it is mostly it is helium and nitrogen is also used in some cases but most of the times helium is used and on which basis the gas chromatography works means the principle on which the gas chromatography works or on which basis it separates out the different components from a mixture is the difference in boiling point of the sample so I will explain you later uh, in the when we discuss the instrumentation that how the boiling point works and how the difference in boiling point is considered and how it helps in uh, eluting out the different uh, uh, components from a mixture. Now let's come to the instrumentation part of the gas chromatogram. I have drawn this instrumentation part. Now this first component is a gas flow regulator. This contains the gas or the mobile phase. It contains the mobile phase which has the gas helium. For example, we take the mobile phase now as helium. Now the helium gas enters this box like structure which is known as oven. And oven has a temperature of around 300 to 400 degree Celsius. It is very hot. So it is very hot and here there is an injector port from where the sample is injected. So sample is injected from this injector port and now the sample if it is in liquid form or even if it is in solid form it will automatically get converted into a gaseous form. Why? Because the oven has a temperature of 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. And obviously the sample should be volatile. Volatile are the substances which get converted to gaseous form easily when they are objected to certain type of heat or certain amount of heat. So volatile are those substances. So volatile substances are necessary uh, to be taken as sample in a gas chromatography. If you don't take a volatile substance as a sample in gas chromatography, then the gas chromatography will not work. It will not be able to separate out the uh, separate out the sample or the mixture you want. So when this sample will be injected here, it will combine with this carrier gas. It will combine with this carrier gas. Now what will it will make? It will make it will make carrier gas 
this uh, this mobile phase gas or helium gas is also known as carrier gas because it carries out the sample so that's why i'm saying this as carrier gas so now this carrier gas plus this sample will be present here in the oval and this will enter the this will enter this column and when it will enter this column it will pass through this column which is a gas chromatograph column it will pass through this column and in this column the sample now the sample has been converted into a gaseous form now obviously it is a mix it is a mixture type of a gas form the sample is convert the sample was already a mixture but it was in a liquid form so now it is converted into gaseous form but it's but it still is a mixture so now it has one or two components present obviously in it so now the component which is which is having low boiling point low boiling point this component will easily elute out through this column because the oven temperature is so much that it will convert everything into gaseous form so a component with low boiling point will easily be easily be converted into a gas and will easily be able to elute out from this column elute out means coming out from this column easily so this is known as elute eluting so it will easily elute out from this column so the first component which is eluting out is of low boiling point and the next component which will elute out will be of high bp will be of relatively high boiling point so both of these components first the low boiling point component will reach this detector from this column when they will leave this column they will reach this detector and now the detector will plot a graph so a low boiling point component will form a graph like this i have shown the low boiling point component of black color and then the high boiling point component will elute out from the column and it will reach the detector and now the detector will plot a graph and i have shown the high boiling point component as of green color for your convenience so that you don't get confused and now this graph on the x axis time is plotted and on y axis absorption or the signal strength is plotted now this absorption on the basis of this absorption this uh, this graph is uh, plotted and also the detector has a collecting tube attached to it so the component with low boiling point which will be eluted first will come here and get collected in the first collecting tube and the second component which is of high boiling point will be connected in the another collecting tube so we can say that high boiling point component will be collected in the second tube and low boiling point component will be collected in the first boiling tube so in this way two components are separated easily from the mixture and how can we find the quantity of this we can find the quantity through this graph the area enclosed within this curve can be find out and this area will give the exact concentration of the component present so in this way we can easily separate out the components as well and also we can find the concentration of these components so in this way uh, gas chromatography works and in in this way we can easily separate out the components and also can quantify them or can measure them using this graph which gets plotted through a detector so i hope friends you have understood the every basic uh, functioning and the instrumentation of the gas chromatography if you have any doubts you can ask them in the comment section